Ahoy to all my viewers. In a previous episode, we did some hermit challenges, didn't we? We did some hermit challenges, and as always with hermit challenges, a silly challenge happened. This time, Iskal has challenged me to do my entire Hermitcraft episode with pirate language. <laughs> with pirate language activated. And oh my god, it actually, it changes, it changes a lot. So we've got the crafting. This is the crafting area. We've got Blackbeard's beard, which is difficult to say. Blackbeard's beard. And even Blockades 4, Fish Breathing 3. Renovation. Rudder Lover. What is a Rudder Lover? What does that actually... What does that belong to? <laughs> Corallis just bailed ship. <laughs> oh, actually, what's that called? What, what are spiders called? <laughs> Cheap rope. <laughs> Bolts. Sucking devices. Planks of oak. Yellow shulker box. That's significantly less piratey, to be honest. Boost tracks. Coffer. Rubble. Blackbeard's battle axe. Bomber sparkles. That's a good one. There's, there's a whole bunch. And I'm sure I'm going to be laughing at all of the different item names throughout this entire episode. Anyway, to start things off today, I just want to do something really simple. I just want to use my gold farm. I want to get a ton of this stuff. I'm just in the mood to do some grinding. So hopefully we can get a bunch of bullions of gold, which will then turn into a bunch of chunks of gold, which will then throw into the piglins to get a bunch of other stuff, which probably have weird pirate names too. Anyway, I thought this another mission will work well in the form of a super fast 30 second time lapse. And you may notice in this super fast 30 second time lapse that the zombie pigmen are kind of spawning in pulses, you know, I'll get a batch of them, thousands of them, and I'll be, I'll be swinging my sword like a madman, I'll be overflowing with gold, I'll think I'm rich and buying Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Gucci, all the other designer brands that I don't really know, to be honest with you, um, and then suddenly they'll just dry up, you know, there'll be no zombie pigmen whatsoever, and that's simply the way the nether works. You know, if I'm the only person in the nether, all the zombie pigmen are spawning by me, as soon as someone else comes in, they just spawn by them, because there's millions of spawning spaces by them, and like a couple thousand by me, so I just get nothing. And that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles with this thing. That's something we're going to have to deal with. But with all that being said, it's still incredibly efficient. I mean, as you can see, we've got over two stacks of chunks of gold. And if we run over to my trading farm, you can see we also have about a billion items over here. I mean, we just have, we have so much stuff. But one thing I will say is, is this thing still isn't quite working. Sometimes, you know, the gold will just stop being dropped out to the piglins. So we might have to just do a complete overhaul. But I'll be honest, I really don't fancy doing that today. It's a massive pain in the backside. These piglins have already wound me up. And I'm quite glad that I placed those soul soil lanterns. Or whatever they're called. I can never remember what they're called. I feel like that might be the name. Now that I think about it, they might just be called soul lanterns. There's no soil in a lantern. I'd be very surprised if it was called a soul soil lantern. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop thinking about that because I'm going to start stressing out. In today's episode, we're not actually going to be doing any nether stuff. We're not going to be doing any soul lantern stuff. We're going to be working on the base. This place is looking really, really cool. I'm loving the way that it looks. I still like the way that it looks, which is a good sign, especially this side. This looks completely bonkers to me. I'm a huge fan. But there's only one side that currently looks like that. The rest of them look very perfect, very prim and proper, especially this side over here. This looks completely untouched, and it's meant to look like a ruin, okay? So we need to put some serious, serious time into ruining everything and making everything look better through making it look worse. Yeah? I mean, that, that is technically what we're doing. It's going to be a fun one, though. I'm just going to put the time in. Let's get to it. I swear I craft so much scaffolding every single episode and just lose it every single episode. Where has all of it gone? It's also impossible to read what things are what because I don't recognize any of the names. What's scaffolding called in pirate? I found it and it's called shipbuilding frame. All right, that actually makes sense. Okay, so we need our shipbuilding frame so we can do this. Stage one is to make these things a little bit more bobbly. At the minute, they're very straight and I just need to to knock out some blocks from them to make them look a little bit worse. But as discussed, worse is better. Unless it's worse. Unless it's actually worse, then it's worse. But worse is better if we're making it worse in a good way. Yeah. Now the big question is, have I made this look worse, worse, or worse, better? I would say that is worse, better. That looks worse and better at the same time. It's be worst or wetter. <laughs> I think I prefer wetter. And now all of the sticky outy bits are looking wetter. You know, they're, they're all looking... They're all looking suitably ruined and good. What is the next stage of this? I mean, what do these other pieces have? Okay, so we've got fence posts connecting these bits to those bits, so that makes sense. And then I guess it's just leaves and wood and lots and lots of fence posts. I mean, we have to... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna need a lot of wood here. I really need to get myself set up with some form of monstrosity type thing. You know what Iskel has? That big TNT tree farm that he now has in his industrial district. I need to get myself one of those. Anyway, I'm hoping... I'm really, really hoping... Ah, uh, 
Yeah, tree farm. I'm gonna have to just go do some deforesting. Ren, you're responsible for the deforestation of the Hermitcraft server. How does that feel? To be fair, he probably does a decent chunk of deforestation himself, so I don't think it matters. What on earth is this thing? Whose is this? Because this is a gorgeous build. I am beyond impressed. This is this is so cool looking. That was like an ice farm and tree farm combined. There was some villages in there. There's all sorts of things going on. Super, super cool. Deforestation is actually quite satisfying in Minecraft, isn't it? You know, I'm out here. I've got maybe 10 stacks of wood so far. I just plan on filling up the inventory. It's all I really want to do right now. I have taken out all the oak trees in this area and you really can't tell. It doesn't even look like I've been here. So I suppose that's a good thing. I do have one almost full inventory of oak logs, which should be more than enough for our fence posts and also a little bit extra for some details. That's cool. That's cool. I haven't actually seen... Oh, that's lava. <laughs> I didn't even register that as being lava. That would have been... That would have ruined my day. Right, let's have a look. Okay. I've got some extra golden carrots. That's nice. I guess some rocketeers. I mean, do I want those gold blocks? Am I gonna risk it? Go on then, might as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that's not much of a risk there, is there? I've made a big mistake, a big error. I, I flew in the wrong direction, and I mean, I could actually just use this as a nether portal. I flew in the wrong direction, you see, and I've got very little rockets left. And I've got like 5,000 blocks to travel. Right, well that 40-40 trick is frankly unbelievable because I managed to get all the way from 5,000 blocks. I traveled 3,000 blocks without using a single firework rocket. That doesn't even make any sense. I violated the laws of physics. I've, I've totally violated the laws of physics. I expect Neil deGrasse Tyson to just blast through my door and kick me out my window. Anyway, now that we've returned from our wood gathering mission, we need to do a tiny bit more wood gathering in the form of just gathering up some jungle wood, which thankfully is a lot easier. And now, we build. At least that's what I thought. Nope, not just yet. We still have more resources to gather. This time I need a ton of leaves. And now, building. Part one of the process is all about just getting the fence posts in place. Now, I was reading through a lot of your comments when I actually built this thing up. Originally, a few people were saying about the jungle wood and the oak wood fence posts. I did actually go into a testing world and try out jungle wood fence posts and also oak wood logs. And it just, it didn't quite hit the vibe that I was going for. I didn't quite like it. I really like for me, I think fence posts in Minecraft, when I think of a fence post, I think of an oak fence post. An oak fence post just look natural to me. Are they, I just, they, they always work for me. So that's why I'm using them in this build. And then the jungle wood. I know, in the past I've said it's the ugliest block. <laughs> and that's really embarrassing because now I'm using it all the time in my build. But it's seriously grown on me lately. Like I'm really, really liking the way that it looks and I'm really liking the way that it's interacting with this build. Immediately, after doing the very simple but very laborious task of getting these things in place, it just does such a good job of unifying the build. These don't feel separate from the main tower anymore. It all feels interconnected. It feels, it just feels right. I'm happy, you're happy. If you're not, then why are you still watching? I'm feeling good. Right, let's move on to the next stage. And that, of course, is placing in all of the bushes. So we need to get all of the bushes, all of the undergrowth and everything like that in place. But before we do, I noticed that there seems to be just things that are appearing in my base at the minute. You know, there's signs all over the place. There's a few signs up at the top of some of these things. I mean, they're just, you know, it seems like my base is a bit of a target for various signs. But I spotted this and it started with hello. So I think we can all, we all know who that's come from. <laughs> Hello. Stress has your suit, but I have something better for you. Be better, better for you. In my opinion, this is a double successful completion of my Hermit Challenges initiation challenge. Well, this, I've got to see. So it seems like I'm not getting my suit back. All right, that's <laughs> that's the first thing that I'm, I'm, I'm re through reading this, I don't think there's any chance I'm getting my suit back. So I'm going to be staying as a beauty queen. All right. <gasps> Bamba, 12 Bamba. Now I have to know, is this the original 12 Bamba? Because if this is the original 12 Bamba, then, oh. Right, where did he store this stuff? So he had he had a diamond vault. I mean, it looks like, unless his diamond vault is overflowing, it looks like he's moved it into the middle there. Yes, his diamond, his diamond vault has very much been looted. There it is. <gasps> he's given me the original, the original 12 Bamba. Um, oh, well, oh, well, I mean, yeah, 
I'm going to make a bamboo suit. Except I definitely lack the ability to do anything like that. So I'm going to order one in and it will be with me by the next episode. In the meantime, I have to keep this stuff safe. So it's going straight into the valuable sugar box and you know what? It can go in the first slot. It goes above diamonds. I do feel a little bit bad taking the 12 bamboo off of this gal. You know, in the world of Hermitcraft, that 12 bamboo is probably one of the most valuable items on the server. So I, I feel like I have to repay him and I do have something very piratey in mind that we could do. But before we do that... It's time to build. A little bit of extra ruining has been done to this hanging off a bit, and it looks really, really cool. I'm super happy with it. And as I was flying around looking, I started thinking, who was the first person to think to ruin something in Minecraft? Did you know what I mean? Like, once, once we were able to place leaves on their own, was it, like, one of the first builds that somebody did? Or did it take a while to develop this ruinous style? Because I don't remember seeing it back in, say, like, 2012, 2013. As far as I remember, 2012 and 2013 were still the years of just diamond block houses and, like, squares. <laughs> just a big block. No one was building anything beautiful. Actually, that's totally untrue. I think the reality is people were building beautiful things. I just definitely wasn't one of those people. Everything I was building back then was horrendous. Anyway, I am almost done now. We are... I think this could be... Yeah, this is the final side. We only have one side left. The rest of them have been fully bushed. Yeah, that's right. Bushed is now officially a verb. Oh, do I remember my A-level English? Is it actually a verb? Yes, a verb is a doing word. Bushed. So now that my base has been suitably bushed, and we've got all the fence posts in, and we've got all the ruining in place, this thing is now looking... It's looking sweet. It's looking sweet from all angles. Originally, it was looking sweet from one angle and one angle alone. Now it's looking nuts from every single space that you look at it. But still, there are a billion and one things that we actually need to do with this area. I'm thinking we should probably build up this platform. And I don't think I'm going to go too crazy with it. I think I'm just going to do... I'm just going to do grass again, I think. So filling grass up here, I might actually fill the entire thing with grass because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this space just yet. And thankfully, while in the process of building up this thing, I actually discovered a whole ton of grass just sitting around in these chests. I would love to know how many items I actually have just sat in chests like this because I imagine it's, a, it's just a ridiculous quantity. The reason that I want to build with so much grass and so many bushes in this build is because the jungle colors are fantastic. I wish, I wish that all of Minecraft was this saturated. Because it just, it looks so happy. Oh, dearie me, that is not something that I thought about. Yeah, I'm basically transforming my entire base into a mob f Oh, wow, I really am transforming it into a mob farm. Look at that. Oh, I've got to light up that place somehow. And I'm not faring particularly well off the back of it. Even if I've managed to light up the majority, there's still so many dark spaces. And mobs just, just tend to be spawning everywhere. What? No, what? Oh, what? I just popped through my nether portal and there was a creeper there and he just he just completely destroyed a me I almost died but b my nether portal I don't have flint and steel I don't have anything that I can use to reignite it I honestly can't believe how much of a difference that has made that has made my base look so solid it looks like a solid build now you know it looks like a it's starting to ebb towards completion it really really is you know, bit by bit, we're getting there. I mean, obviously, this area does look a little bit empty. There's not too much going on. I kind of played with the idea of, like, a giant greenhouse. But, yeah, that doesn't really fit in with the theme that we're going for. You know, this is meant to be an ancient structure. A greenhouse definitely isn't ancient. I mean, this build definitely lends itself to some form of connection between this area and this area, like a tower type thing. And then maybe a garden around it. Yeah, maybe a garden around it. Um... Oh god, this is difficult. I think I'll come back to this when I have a few more ideas. For the time being, though, uh, I think it's time for me to repay a scout. Not that I need to, he was just so generous giving me that 12 bamboo that I, I feel like I have to do something for him. And of course, in true pirate fashion, I have to bury it. I can't just give him something, I have to put it in the ground. One inefficient way of, of handing out things, by the way, to bury it and then create a map and then put an X on it. And then people have to go out and f I mean, that's just an absolute nightmare, but it does seem like it'll be fun to do. So I'm over here by the industrial district. I guess I just fly off into the distance. And then, <laughs> yeah, I guess generate a map and then we can do some burying. Now, I really need to make sure that I personally don't get lost as I'm doing this because there's actually a high likelihood that I will get lost in the process of doing... Are you joking me? There's a, there's a gravel biome right here. This entire time, there's been a gravel biome right next to my industrial district. I had no idea. I know now we can piglin trade and that's like fine. You know, we can get all the gravel we need. I would have liked to have known that. This seems like a pretty good spot. Okay, treasure map has been generated and I'm literally in the corner. I'm as in the corner as I possibly could have been. 
All right. Where seems like a good spot? I would say down by the river. I am terrible at navigating with these things. Oh my goodness. After flying around in circles for a bit, I managed to find the place that I actually wanted to go. And I've written out a little message for Iskal. It says, thanks for the 12 bamboo. Hope you appreciate this gold as I know you're running low as your farm is not as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've included, he's got a full stack in this barrel here. Now that is funny because Iskal is currently overflowing with gold. He has, he's building everything out of gold. He has more gold than anyone else on the server. <laughs> and his farm's way better than mine. So that's just going to annoy him. One, two, three, four. That should be... Oh, look at that. Oh, that is a proper little pirate map right there. Okay, cool. Now I just have to deliver it to his base. Now obviously I can't not give him a clue because that would be a little bit unfair. So I, I've placed down this barrel, Hermit Challengers, which is very, very piratey. I think we'll all agree. Uh, and it says, I'm a pirate doing pirate things. Sweet Industrial District, by the way. You may notice the capitalization of the word sweet. Industrial District as well, so he knows where it is. Southwest. I mean, if he doesn't get it, I'm going to call him moron for the rest of his life. Anyway, let's get back to building because I think I've had an idea. I was playing around with archway designs and things like that and nothing was really working. And then I went back to an idea that I actually had at the start of the season. And it's kind of what I founded this base on, to be honest with you. But then I ditched it because he did the button and I thought it might be a little bit too similar. I want my base to be alive. I want it to be a living thing. I want it to be a thing that we have to keep alive. Now that, that isn't the same as the button where it would gradually count down and you'd press it. That was really simple. Instead, this works on a number of different attributes. You know, we'd have to feed it, we'd have to play with it, we'd have to, we'd have to basically keep it satisfied. It would be a very moody teenager base, essentially. And we'd have to stay on top of all the various attributes. Now this is not necessarily a brand new concept. I've actually done it in the past in Hermitcraft Season 4. And I also did it when I hit 100,000 subscribers. I did something fairly similar. And Etho has got his Wilson that he's got in his single player survival. All of these things are kind of based around the Tamagotchi, which is a toy that existed when I was a kid, which I'm sure there's a lot of you watching right now who have no clue what a Tamagotchi is, and that disappoints me. But when I initially wrote out the plans for this base, I thought it'd be wicked to do it on a mega large scale, like have a huge, massive, massive build, like the one that we have here, that is essentially a living thing, hence the future civilization trying to preserve the old civilization. And you know what? Why did I ever ditch this idea? This is a great idea. And these, these here lend themselves so much to having the attributes on the side of them. Like, can you imagine? In fact, I'm going to mock something up. Give me a second. Can you tell that I'm excited, by the way? Can you tell that I'm excited? I've gotten super fired up because this is like a massive redstone project. <laughs> this has turned my huge base into a huge redstone project. And that, I'm all for it. All right, let's, let's do some mocking, okay? Let's, give me a second. I can't believe I was going to ditch this idea. What was I thinking? What was I doing? What was I thinking? Come on, I've got a mock. Stop mocking! Why do I keep talking to myself? It's a fantastic idea though, isn't it? It's a fantastic idea. Not fantastic! Not fantastic! Things are spawning everywhere. Things are spawning absolutely everywhere. I forgot to light up the center of my base. It's still a good idea though, isn't it? It's a great idea. I'm just so happy about this idea. I'm happy that I've gone back with this idea. Alright, seriously, I'm gonna mock now. The mock is coming. Now obviously the whole point of a mock is just to get a rough idea of what it's going to look like. And to be honest, I don't think... Oh yeah, no, that, well that's... This is not a good mock. Okay, but... The concept is there. So you can kind of see where my brain is going. So we're going to have these counters going down the sides. And that is going to correspond to the health of the dude whose head could sit up there. Look, we have like a, we have like a perfect space for a gigantic four-faced head. <laughs> or it could be the health of the chariot, but I don't think it's going to be the health of the chariot. The chariot might end up staying in some capacity. But now we could have like a giant head inside this area here oh my goodness so obviously i've got a lot of planning and a lot of designing to do i've got a lot of research and development to work on i'm just so happy that this main structure here has ended up working out so nicely for the concept because as i say i kind of put the concept on the back burner i just decided not to do it so i didn't design my base around it but the base has actually ended up being perfect for the concept so sometimes you know the world the world just works out in a nice way and on that note I think it's time to end. Hope you enjoyed this Hermitcraft episode. Hope you're excited for this idea. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. And ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last time you ever hear me say this. It is currently 31 degrees Celsius in my office, which is pretty hot for an indoors room. Okay, it's, it's hot outside, all right? But when you're sat in stagnant air, 31 degrees is pretty warm. And tomorrow, my air conditioning is being installed. And it will be a cool, 
11 degrees, I reckon.